Um, I listened to the testimony of Mr. Waxman and Mr. Markey and uh, Mr. Zaccone. They have praised you as supporting the FCC approach to rulemaking, and uh, Mr. Markey has praised you, and Mr. Waxman, I think other Democrats. I, I know that must put you in a little awkward position, having been the ranking member of this committee and working with you and, and uh, all the consumer groups as well as others trying for months to try and work this out and realizing how difficult it was. And then reading through your, your testimony, I think maybe this will clear it up for Mr. Waxman and Mr. Markey a little bit. Um, the chairman of your company, uh, Randall Stevenson, summed up his reaction to the FCC. This is in your opening statement, his decision. And I thought I'd read it because it really, I think, goes to the point, perhaps gets you off the, the hot seat here because he's speaking for your company. And he said, uh, we would be lying if we said we were pleased with the, uh, the approach. But it's a place we know we have. We didn't get everything we'd like to have. But I'd like to have had no regulation. That was his point. I'd like to have had no regulation, to be candid. So, you know, to Mr. Waxman and Mr. Mark here, it's saying that you folks are just out there touting this approach. I think your chairman has pointed out that if he had his druthers, he'd like to have no regulation. Is that still accurate in your opinion? Uh, that's absolutely accurate, Mr. Stearns. I think uh, um, th th this entire debate for, for many years, but certainly for the past two years, has, has revolved around a very difficult question, which is, which is uh, should one regulate to deal with hypothetical problems? Right. Because by and large, that's what, that's what we're dealing with is, is hypotheticals. And it's the hardest thing, I think, for policymakers to decide. And if you move into this space, it's very, very hard to draw lines. And this is one of the things that, that worries us the most about, uh, about moving into this area. Um, it was, it was stated earlier that, uh, um, um, you know, uh, different members of the Internet ecosphere might be regulated in a, in a different fashion, some regulated, some not. And inevitably the danger there is, of course, the government gets into picking winners and losers. And, yeah. and our concern, of course, is, is not only with that, but with the fact that the government doesn't do this very well. Yeah. Dr. Kovacs. Um, in looking through your testimony, uh, the aspect about your opening statement, we talked about the transfer of wealth from broadband internet access providers to application providers is accurate, but you say it does not seem to grasp the problem for both parties. Um, so you say it provides those who ride the network with a strategically vital financial weapon to use against broadband internet access, who in many cases are their competitors. To put it in another way, it takes all bargaining power away from the BIA. You might just confirm that, what you mean. Um, a couple of different things. For example, one of the things the FCC did not look at is a situation in which Google might decide to withhold its services from Verizon in Boston but continue to provide them to Comcast, which would, I think, become a huge problem for Verizon of uh, retaining customers. The uh, revenues that are taken away from the uh, voice provider, who is also a broadband provider like Frontier by Google Voice, Skype, Vonage, all of those are represent a transfer of wealth. And they become problematic for Google and et cetera if that means that the network cannot continue to innovate. And I think, to me, the really troubling piece of this discussion is the assumption that only the companies at the edge, like Robbins, need to innovate, but that Mr. Dereggi doesn't. And in fact, she won't be able to do her business unless he keeps investing. Mr. Dereggi, um, have you actually read the FCC's approach to this net neutrality? I mean, have you, act, you or your staff actually taken time to read it? What specifically in there that you don't like? I mean, can you tell the, the committee maybe some specifics about it? Yeah, uh, the briefly. thing that I don't like about it most is that it's, it's, it's everything's double standard. It, it does half the problem. Uh, for example, uh, I, I want consumers to have their choice of content. Um, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't really give that, you know. It, it, so right, it's, too, have, it's vague right. in, in an areas you think it should be precise. Would that be? Right. Exactly. It's also very vague. So because of it, it allows the, it to be interpreted 
by the person just happens to be in the office at that specific time who could have a completely different viewpoint of what those terms mean. And because it's vague in this point, does it create uncertainty to you in terms of investment? A tr no. tremendous amount of uncertainty. I just don't know what to expect. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman's time's expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Michigan, Mr.